Hey everybody, the video you're about to watch is me attempting another black and white collage. I thought it was going to be something super easy that I could just quick make in like 20 minutes. And this is day three of me working on it in uh, little bits of time. It gave me a run for my money. I think I like where I ended up though. So you can let me know what you think. And uh, if you're ever interested in how to collage something to death, then this is the right video to watch. In my case, anyway, I'm learning to continue pushing through even when I want to give up and just start over. So I wanted to give up about three different times and I didn't. That's my win for today. Hope you guys are having a great day. Remember, if you haven't subscribed yet, you can subscribe. And if you hit the little bell icon, then you get notified every time I post a video. And uh, to all my new subscribers, hello. So glad to have you here. Welcome to my black and white collage odyssey. <laughs> this, I really started out with this, much like Gilligan's Island. I thought it would be a quick three hour tour and it ended up being a several day process trying to get it to some kind of resolution. I am happy with where it ended up. It ended up very differently than I thought it would, even halfway through. But I'm gathering materials here, just looking for different types of black and white materials. This is some craft paper, actually from a, a bouquet of flowers that a friend sent me. It was very sweet. And they had this gorgeous paper packing for packing the flowers. This is actually emails and quotes that I've written down some tissue paper, anything and everything. Starting to arrange things, not thinking too much, but trying to put things with small detail next to things with large scale brush marks. I'm, uh, I don't know, contrast junkie, I guess. I really like high contrast things. I like it in other people's work when they do very subtle, um, every color blends into the next color paintings. Gorgeous. Love seeing them. It's just not what I go to for myself. I move the paper around a lot, especially in this video. I don't know if I was thinking too much or if it was just one of those days, one of the combinations of paper, who knows? Some days things fit together really smoothly and without much thought. This was not one of those days for me. The black tissue paper with the stripes there that I'm working with, those are actually collage papers that I made in the botanical jelly print video. You can click on the link on the upper right to watch that video if you haven't already. I had thought initially this video might be me using those jelly prints for the collage and using most of the collage papers in this collage. And these were the only ones I think that I used. So it's clearly not a sequel to that video, but I did use them. So it counts, right? I'll do that a different day. This took out a, a whole thing of its own. It's already starting to get busy. I don't have too many areas of collage that I've added that are quiet. The closest I've gotten to is on the right side, the white piece with the black thick marker circle shape. So 
so I'm trying to find pieces that will give me some open space that will feel quiet but not empty. That's really what I was looking for. While looking for those pieces, I found this piece. Not quiet, not empty. Pretty bold piece, but that piece I felt was a good anchor for that corner. Gotta love a good stripe. It's funny going backwards because looking at that now, I wish I had put that little loop de loop right there. However, I didn't. I chose to do black and white from the start because I have a lot of it and I have a lot of variations on the theme. I have a lot of subtle black and whites. I have a lot of bold black and whites as you see. But for me that limitation keeps me focused but also I have enough freedom to work and then I'm not looking all over the place making a rainbow, <laughs> which I do like to make rainbows as well. But with the black and white, you know, the color palette is set in that way. And then I can just focus on shapes, patterns, scale, value. Because I have so many high contrast black and whites though, it is a lot for the eyes even for me, even for my eyes that love the contrast. See, I really wanted that loop-de-loop -loop in there. I don't remember why I have that black, black curvy shape. I think it was I was making stencils for jelly plate printing. It's probably not hard to see which of my which paper pieces were my favorites because I keep trying to fit them back in. Do you guys do that too? just really want a piece or two to fit in and it kind of never does. It's good to try though. Some of them do fit back in. Because I was having trouble thinking of finding more black and white that I wanted to add, I thought I'd bring in some color. The piece at the top of the right hand page had some very pale pink and kind of a bold yellow on it. So I decided to use that and bring in some yellows and oranges and make it a warm color theme. On the left side, I thought maybe I would make it a cool theme with some blues and greens. And then honestly, I think this is where the wheels start to uh, fall off. I think I got so distracted by all the possibilities of all of my color pieces that uh, it just, <laughs> in my mind at the time, it felt like uh, I was just totally off the rails. And I was losing 
momentum. I was losing focus and I wasn't sure where to go next. And so I just started trying everything. I should probably do this one so I'd make myself a rule that I can't try putting a piece in more than three times. If I get to the third time, I just have to retire it for that collage. But I make my video a lot shorter too. You'll notice I don't always blow dry my work if I'm putting tissue paper on, if I'm putting thin papers on with collage, because those dry fast enough on their own. The yellow piece was a was a thicker piece of paper, and in order to, to get it to lay down, I needed to put a decent amount of matte medium on it. Excuse me, gloss medium. So I just wanted to make sure it was it was down and dry before I moved on. Really the danger of not having things dry relatively quickly is if you put something else on top of it and change your mind and try to pull it back off, if it's not all the way dry, the bottom layer, if it's not all the way dry, you will peel off the bottom layer when you take the top layer off. Ask me how I know. <laughs> so you, it's one thing to change your mind on one, la on one layer, but to keep the layers as distinct layers, it's, it is important to have it dry in between. Luckily, glass medium, when thinly applied, dries very quickly. So you see me just trying pieces everywhere. This is like, the <laughs> in my mind, when I'm doing this, this is like the check engine light is on of the car. I can't tell what's overheating. I'm just like flipping switches, you know, changing gears, doing any of the tricks that I know of to turn that light on, turn that light off, excuse me, and just have everything be fine. I mean, it's art, it's not an emergency, but it's it's like a, my brain starts to get, I don't know what my brain, my brain starts to get very like shut down maybe is the word. Shut down, but my thinking and my overthinking speeds up. So when that happens and my critic starts you know, appearing in the back of my mind saying untrue things like, you know, why are you doing this? This is never going to work out. You can't save this one. You know, basically eject from the fighter plane and jump out. Boy, I've got a lot of metaphors today. I've been doing a lot better with telling my inner critic that thank you. I don't need your input right now. I've got this handled. I don't necessarily say it so, you know, cordially, but, or as directly, but I've been able to, with lots of practice and lots of practice making and using my sketchbooks and just continuing to kind of fight through and finish pieces, even when I'm unsure of how to do that, my inner critic's voice has been getting softer and softer. It's still there, very much still there, but I'm more confident in trusting myself to figure it out than ever before. So that's really, I'm very thankful for that because that is definitely something I've been working on for years. And it helps a lot. It helps a lot when I just know that I've done tons of collages before and I can keep going 
worst case scenario, I paint over something, or I just turn the page in my sketchbook and move on. And that's the kind of confidence that I want you guys to have and you guys to feel about your art. And if you keep practicing and keep trying new things and keep pushing past what you think is not good enough or you think is ugly or you think is messy, right? Keep working on it then. If it's not done, it's not done. Don't stop. You need to, you know, practice. If you want to get better, you need to practice digging yourself out of the of the creative holes that you find yourself in. There will always be challenges. There will always be pieces of art that, you know, in the middle, you just don't like at all. And it's going to be ugly phases and there's going to be the artists that I follow online, uh, that I look up to, that I kind of adore and, and learn from, they all, every single one of them, goes through this process, the, you know, this creative process. You start things out, everything's great. I love it. Then things start to go south. And it's like, ooh, I don't know. I don't like this at all. What's going on? Why is it so ugly? It's horrible. I'm terrible. I'm a terrible artist. Right? And then towards the end, it's like, oh, wait, I think I kind of like it. And then by the end, you're like, this is awesome. It's the same for every single artist. It might be that the middle part that's messy, you're in there for a shorter amount of time because with experience, you can get out of it faster. That's hopefully what's coming our way, right? But, you know, I follow Al Sheridan and Jody King and... Uh, Louise Fletcher and a million other artists, not a million, but you know, a lot. And every single one of them talks about things not going the way they thought they were going to go. No one has this figured out. If, if an artist had a perfect formula for making really great works of art, they would stop making great works of art and move on to something else. As artists, we, I think we thrive in discovering new things and learning new things and applying new things. And when it's not a challenge, it's no longer exciting. And this one was a very much a challenge for me. And you see that I switched on to paint because I needed to quiet some things down. It was getting oppressively busy, even for my standards. And I like, sometimes I really like busy things. So I'm adding white paint here, quieting some things down. I'm using a, just like a little plastic stick to carve into the paint a bit here and there. And the white helped it helped a lot. It helped me a lot just to be able to see the higher contrast, but the smaller, more subtle areas where the white doesn't quite cover things. You can still see the depth behind it. And with that, I realized I was getting much closer to where I wanted to go. There's that Oh, that's a pencil. That's not the stick. <laughs> Putting some pencil lines in on the left side, the pencil line actually carved into the wet paint. And here I'm thinking, 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 thinking. I make a couple more details and then I basically call it done. So you guys can let me know. Do you think it's still too busy? If so, which one is still too busy? I thought the right one might be too busy still, but you'll see in a minute I put it into an in-situ situation so that you could 
see it with a frame and see what it looks like from afar. And I think I really like it that way. Sometimes just taking it out of your sketchbook, putting it up on, even if it's a fake wall with an app, it still really helps to paint the picture. All in all, this was super challenging for me for whatever reason. I'm so glad that I kept going and it was a really fun challenge because I had to figure something out and I had to use all my problem solving skills and you guys are all capable of this. It just takes more practice. The more we practice, the faster we can get ourselves out of these situations when they arise. Or we just turn the page and keep moving on our sketchbook, right? There's no wrong way to do this. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Do let me know if you try it. Let me know what your sticking points are that you get stuck with. And if you've found a way to get through them, let me know that too. Bye, everybody.